AP has had some issues in the past few years of staying healthy himself. So that's a risk in itself. The last thing and more important than anything is that, well, the other thing is his age. I mean, the brother's 31. I, I get, I give him the benefit of the doubt because he's, he's, he's totally, you know, an exception to the rule as far as like what they talk about with running backs. But the last thing, you know, uh, more than anything is that you got a plethora of running backs that's going to be coming out in the draft fresh and, and, and they're all not going in the first round. So why would New Orleans want to pick up, you know, someone like AP? Now, people going to show up to the game. You best believe that if he in, if he in New Jersey. But it, 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 him and some of these other, you know, veteran players, like I was saying earlier uh, last week in the show, is they're going to be sitting on the sideline. They're going to be sitting on the sideline to the draft. So for him, I, maybe he was just doing a feeler and just like, hey, keep me in mind after the draft because right now we're we're about two – Two and a half weeks from the draft, maybe, and nobody is going to be making any moves on free agents right now. So, uh, AP will still be out there, and someone will get him for a bargain. And if he blows up, then is that team's going to look like the smartest team in the world? Uh, speaking of smart people in the world, my man Chief Rocker Jersey Vern is in the building. What's up, Chief? That is also an X Squad uh, affiliates family member, and Chief is also on the WSME. Uh, and he got his own show uh, that he does a recap. Three hours, nonstop, no commercials, ladies and gentlemen. So if you, if you want nonstop entertainment, then ch- tune in to the Chief Rocker Jersey Vernon Show on Spreaker.com. So that's my man. Shouts out to Chief. Uh, Chief is talking. Let's see. I'm looking at the chat room. He's de- he's talking to uh, uh, Morrow and, and Kesey. So they they going back a little bit. Uh, Rough Buff. Is in the building as well. What's up, Rough Buff? I come in peace once again, Rough. I come in peace. I got my hands up, man. I got my hands up. I don't want no problems. I don't want no problems, Rough. So uh, we're gonna move on to to the NBA, and, and we're we're in the final final day of the regular season. So this playoff thing is about to you know uh, turn up, and I'm getting you know some some. Some notifications, you know, as as we go. So I'll keep you up to date if you if you're not already. Uh, in the and I'm only gonna cover you know the the, the teams that's really is vying for a playoff spot. The uh, other teams don't matter. So uh, Indiana right now is up at halftime, fifty to forty three on Atlanta. They actually was up by a lot more. I'm really surprised at that score. Uh, as far as like where they're at right now, with a half left. And you're only up by seven and majority of the, the Hawks players, cause they don't have nothing to play for. They're sitting out with rest. That's scary. That's scary. That's scary. Like last week, scary against the Cavs, you know, so Indiana better stop playing around and go ahead and get this thing over with in the third quarter so they can go ahead and lock up a playoff spot. Uh, other team, which this is really turning out exactly how I thought it would be. They already, they just started the third quarter. Chicago is up 50 to 32 on Brooklyn. So, uh, Brooklyn sat, uh, we'll get into that in a, in, in a little bit, but the, Brooklyn basically sat everybody. And the last game, which it looks like it's probably not going to mean anything at this point is, uh, Miami is playing against Washington. It's halftime and Miami is up 56 50. So, uh, I just want to talk about, uh, from, from last week, the, the Cavaliers um, are, are making moves. This is what they're doing right now. Uh, LeBron is sitting out tonight. No no surprise in that. Um, they did have a epic collapse. Um, and that's what I'm going to call it, an epic collapse. They played the Hawks. And, and let's just be real. Uh, I'm here in Atlanta, and I cheer for the Hawks. But I even know the Hawks got lucky on that. Your starters weren't playing. You were down 26 in the fourth quarter. That's normally a uh, uh, game over. You know, you know what it is. It's normally, tell them. Game. Blouses. That's normally how it is. And I don't know if someone slipped on a banana peel and, and, and everything just started going bad. But they blew that lead. And, and Boston got up, and, and Boston is in first place now and all this stuff. But having said all that, this is why none of this matters at, at this point because Cleveland is, I, Cleveland is going to finish second. I, I got Boston, you know, finished first. The first place 
it is more important for Boston than it is for uh, Cleveland. Here's why. Cleveland has been in this position before, not necessarily with some of the road, you know, trips and, and, and losing multiple games, you know, and all that stuff. But they've been in this play, this position before uh, about two or three years ago, I want to say. And Atlanta had won 60 games, 60 games. Number one, number one in the Eastern Conference. They get to Eastern Conference Finals against Cleveland. What happens? Cleveland wipes the mat with them. Sweep them. Gone. And I had to watch that. And it hurt. But it just showed you how when the playoffs start, you have to go to that other level. You have the first round of the playoffs is not like the second round. And and it gets harder and harder. And you got to keep turning up that pressure. And Atlanta wasn't able to do it. And, And that's what's scary, you know, about this Cleveland team is that they have prevailed, you know, through troubling times. I mean, last year is a is a case in point. You're down three one in the finals. You 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 beat the Warriors down three one. Everyone thought that was over, and they come back and they win a game seven on the road. So that's why this second place don't mean anything. The other thing is, if you haven't seen, Darren Williams just came off a game where they played Miami. They lost, but it's it's not about wins and losses right now at this point. It's about tweaking and finding tuning and getting everything ready for this playoff run. He hit 30, 35 points. Darren Williams, 35 points. That's if if you're not paying attention to America, that's a big thing because what happens in the playoffs is everyone this is not a regular season so you're not playing the same guys. Everyone starts playing a matchup game. You are playing someone that you have to beat four times. So after the first game, you got a chance to change up your, your strategy, figure out some stuff, and expose some people. And they are doing that. They just they just wave uh, my man Larry Sanders. Uh, he was supposed to be in there, and, and he was going to be a key piece. They said, Larry, you got to go, man. And they pick up a dude from the D-League. Uh, um, God, I forgot his name. Eric uh, Dreyfus, I think, or something like that. And 7-3. Uh, why do you think they got a 7-3, 7-3 uh, center? Because... They got plans for him. They got plans. What if the Cleveland runs into, let's say, San Antonio in the finals? They got Biggs, Aldrich, you know, Gasol, you know, guys like that. They need someone to bang with them. Maybe not play 30 minutes or anything like that, but to bang with them. And this is why you have to worry about Cleveland. Boston, what has Boston done? They haven't done anything at this point, but they got the number one seed right now. They better hold on to it. They better hold on to it. Uh, Morrow uh, just brought up a good point in the in the chat room. He's saying, you know, playoffs slow down. He's absolutely right. It, it slows down dramatically, and and folks get exposed in the playoffs where that regular season stuff, where you maybe are catching someone on a back to back or something like that, or they going through you know a, a thing or whatever. At this point, it's just like, yo, I've been banging in this paint and, and falling all over the place for the entire season. I'm finna give it my all. I didn't do all that just to, you know, play around for a few games and go home. So it changes up, you know, big time. Uh kicking uh Kesey was saying, you know, uh talking about the next level. He was talking about the Cavs. Cavs go to that next level. You know? Uh shouts out oh no no oh how did I miss this person? Shouts out to another ex squad affiliates family member, my man Jay Fish, the microwave. Uh, he got a show also on here on the WSME, and, and that's cooking with the microwave. So check that out, uh, ladies and gentlemen. He is on on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, one oh five Eastern Standard Time. Um, so what up, Jay Fish? Appreciate you stepping into the room. We just talking about you know these Cleveland Cavaliers and and, and how they not scared right now. They ain't, they ain't worried about nobody. And, and and the last thing. Y'all, y'all may think this is not a big deal, and they didn't, it really didn't make a, a, a big announcement about it, but the Cavaliers re-signed Dante Jones. And I know you're thinking, like, Dante Jones, Dante Jones. Yeah, that Dante Jones, the one that be slapping people in the groin, Dante Jones. Yeah, they got him just like they picked him up last year at this time to make this playoff run. So all they want him is for some muscle, to get in somebody's face, get somebody angry, piss somebody off. And... If you haven't seen it before, it, this is this is nothing old. I mean, Chicago did this with Rodman. They they 
put him out there. Even though he was he played the regular season, they put him out there. They get on your nerves and all this stuff. Next thing you know, you're in foul trouble or you done got yourself kicked out the game. So if you need someone punched in the groin, that's why they got Dante Jones. So they are ready and, and, and able to, to uh, deal with anything that's thrown at them. And, and at the end of the day, you got the best player in the world in LeBron James. He said it himself. Uh, Mauro World is... is Man, Morrow is spitting that knowledge tonight. He said playoffs get physical and punks get exposed real fast. I'm going to say that one more time. Playoffs get physical and punks get exposed real fast. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So if, if you if you ain't ready to play, don't come down here. Don't even come into the arena because you're going to get exposed. Right, Lopan? Indeed. <laughs> yeah, Lopan. Lopan, you a punk? Okay, I was just like, see, I almost got you, Lopan. You, you about to answer? Lopan ain't no punk. Indeed. Yeah, I know you ain't no punk, Lopan. Uh, shouts out to uh, Tondra Ivy. She is in the building as well. Uh, she is in here, Ti for life. Uh, in the building. So appreciate you stepping in, uh, Tondra. Welcome to the show. And again, this is the Wait a Minute Show on the WSME uh, Network and. I am your host, Jelani J.B. Bodie, and I also have a show on Saturdays as well. So if you go to the wait a minute show.com, you can also listen to any of my previous episodes. And if you got Facebook, which about 90 million of y'all do, you can go there too and go to at the wait a minute show because I do double duty, ladies and gentlemen. I'm on the audio and I'm on the video. So you can watch me live on Facebook Live as well as I do my show. So uh, we're going to move into, now this is a little bit of a mixture. We're going to do football and basketball. And I know you're like, how can you do that uh, all together? Here's here's how. Tony Romo. And I'm, I'm going to start it off with that, and you know where I'm going. So Tony Romo uh, retired, ain't filed his paperwork yet, you know, but he got an invite from the Dallas Mavericks. Now, Dirk is his boy. Cuban is his boy. And they just like, yo, we're going to let my man go out in style. So we're going to make him a math for the day. And what that is, is basically they bring him in and they treat him just as if he was on the team. And they put him on the team. So he shows up in the morning, you know, early for a shoot around and, you know, film study and all that stuff. He got his little practice jersey on, you know, and all that good stuff. And, 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 Goes out there, you know, hit a couple shots and everything. And then, you know, he go back to the crib or wherever it is that he go and he come back for the game that night. So they plan the Nuggets. And he's in the layup line. He gets to sit on the bench. They even introduce him, you know, as the six starter. Six starter. Yeah, not six man, six starter. And and he takes a team photo. So they they rolled out the, the carpet, you know, for this dude. The only thing he did not get to do. Which at first I was a little disappointed because I really wanted it to happen, but now I found out why it didn't happen. I'm like, all right, that makes sense. It, it, it was I wanted him to play in the game. I was like, man, why can't they sign him to a 10 day contract and then let him play in the game? That would be crazy. And come to find out, Mark Cuban did try that. He was going to do it, and he and he told Adam Silver, you know, look, find me, bro, find me, you know. But Tony Romo is going to play, and, and Adam Silver, you know, basically put the brakes on that and, and had to let him know you know, who he was. Like, I don't, I don't know who you think you're talking to, but uh, I'm the commissioner, you know? So you, you better watch your mouth. Indeed. Yeah, Lopan, th- that's that's how you be talking to Big L. Watch your mouth, Big L. So uh, Tony Roman did not get to play, but then I started thinking about uh, a few things. This is it's good he didn't. It's mad disrespectful to just come in and then just, you know, play, play a game that guys have been – you know, sacrificing to get that opportunity. And then you get that opportunity to play in the game because of who you are in another sport. That's not fair. You know, uh, the other thing, he's not in shape. He go out there, you know, and, and, and run a couple times up and down the court, might be tired. And the last thing, you know where I'm going. You know I'm going there, and I'm going to go there. Yes. Tony Romo will go out there and tear his Achilles and then the internet would be going mad. I mean, the the guy from United Airlines would be off the hook right now. United Airlines would be off the hook if Tony Romo had a guy hurt. 
Right, Lopan. So it is a good thing that he just sat 